as I've been working through the Sermon on the Mount, trying to uh, work at the grammar, looking at each word grammatically, and uh, seeking to look at what Jesus is teaching. Last time we finished uh, teaching about oaths in verses 33 to 37. Uh, today, we come to the teaching about non-resistance of Jesus, his teaching in that area, beginning in verse 38 and going through to verse 42. It reads, Ekusate hate rete aftalman anti aftalmu kai adanta anti adantas. You have heard, again, we've seen this uh, verb or, or this word repeatedly, akuo, aorist, uh, excuse me, aorist imperative, uh, second person plural from akuo. You have heard that it was said, erethe is from lego, aorist indicative passive from lego that it was said, aftalman anti aftalmu, aftalmu, that is an I instead of an I, kai adanta anti adantos, that is a tooth in the place of a tooth. Jesus, in these verses, he's quoting from the book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 24, Leviticus 24.20, and Deuteronomy 19.21. Uh, and basically, uh, just to look at it, anti, by the way, grammatically takes the genitive. It means an I instead of an I. Aftalmu is your genitive uh, masculine singular from aftalmas. So an I or aftalman an I instead of an I and a tooth, adanta instead of a tooth. And here again, we have the genitive uh, adantas for tooth following ante, which takes the genitive instead of. And then the Lord goes on. And I think basically, uh, let me just pause here a moment. I think he's looking at uh, equal justice. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I'm going to go uh, a little bit deeper, I think Jesus is saying. And I'm going to talk about non-resistance as he applies that to those that want to follow, uh, follow the Sermon on the Mount. So he says in a, in a literal way, Ego de lego humen me antistenai to panero al hastise rapidze estein daxian siagonasu strepsan alto kai tein alein. But I say to you, notice the de here has a contrastive uh, meaning. Ego is just your personal pronoun, I. It makes it emphatic again with lego, your present indicative active first person singular. But I say to you, your data plural in humen, uh, do not resist the evil one. Notice me antistenai is the aorist active infinitive from antistemi. So, uh, and it's here, it's used in an imperatival away. Do not resist. And this is where we get the term non-resistance from antistemi. Do not resist the evil one, but whosoever, and here's an indefinite relative uh, pronoun, whosoever uh, hits you on the right cheek. Notice set is your direct object. Uh, and here we have krapidze, a uh, present indicative active third person singular from hlapidzo. So whosoever hits you in the right cheek, notice ace here takes your accusative and tain dexion, 
siagona, uh, here we have a feminine article followed by the adjective dexion and cheek, the noun, uh, all in the accusative case. So whoever hits you on your right cheek, srepsan alto kai tain alain. That is turn to him, also the other. Notice strepson is your aorist imperative, second person singular from strepho. So turn to him, again the dative case in alto, singular, also uh, probably in a sense of use of kai, also the other. Again, uh, looking at the other cheek. So instead of retaliating back, Jesus says, if you're insulted, and that's probably what it's looking at, an insult, by hitting one on the cheek, turn to the other. Don't seek to insult back. And so often, that is what one wants to do. If someone uh, insults you, it's easy to want to uh, say something hurtful back. Jesus says, no, uh, turn to the other cheek. And then verse 40, Kaitothelanti soi krithenai, kaitan kitona su la bain, afis alto kaita chematian. That is, uh, and to the one who, who wants to go to court, we could say, uh, to be involved in a judgment. And notice, we have kai again, the conjunction, and to thelanti is from thelo. It's a present participle, a dative singular from thelo. So the one who's willing uh, to, uh, for you to go to court. And notice krithenai is your aorist infinitive passive from krino. Then he goes on, kai and uh, to take away your inner garment. Notice tan kitona su labain. Uh, now notice uh, kitona, kiton, is the inner garment that was worn next to the, the skin. So whosoever uh, is wanting to do that and to take it, notice labain is your second aorist infinitive active from lambano. Uh, to take away your inner garment, then uh, permit him, permit to him, or give to him uh, also uh, your outer garment, your chematian. So notice uh, even that outer garment that you have, uh, give that to him. So again, Jesus is teaching a non-resistant attitude toward uh, one who wants to take you to court, is what he's saying. And then as he goes on, at least uh, that is what most commentators feel he's saying, kai hastise agaruse milian hen, to one or whosoever is compelling you uh, to go one mile or show compel you. Notice, Agaruse is your future indicative act in third person singular from agaruo. It means to compel. And often uh, the Roman soldiers would compel people to, to carry something, much like what we saw in the carrying of the cross. Uh, and so what he's really saying by Simon, so what he's really saying here, whosoever shall compel you to go million one mile, then hupage met al tu duo, uh, depart with him uh, two. In other words, go the extra mile. By the way, hen means one. It goes back to ches, uh, meaning one. And so whosoever compels you uh, to go one mile, it's accusative neuter here, then uh, go or depart, here we have another imperative, 
from Hupago, go with him to. And Matt here takes the genitive singular in L2, go with him to. It is interesting that uh, this word means to compel forcibly to impress someone into service, uh, whether he liked it or not. Uh, I'm quoting from uh, Robertson, Cleon Rod Robertson, who was my teacher in, uh, in Bible college, a linguistic key to the Greek New Testament, which I really appreciate very much his work, having studied under him. And actually, he was my coach <laughs> when I was in my last year of college. But at any rate, it goes on uh, as he's defining that to talk about the Roman mile. And I quote him again, a Roman mile is a thousand paces, then a fixed measure about 4,854 feet. So what he's really saying here is uh, whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him to that distance. In other words, uh, again, we have this non-resistant attitude. And then in verse 42, to aitun tese das kaitan thelanta apasu danisestai me apastrepses. In other words, to the one who asks you, give. And notice, aitun uh, ti is from aiteo, a contract verb. It's an articular a present infinitive from aiteo. Uh, uh, it's singular, masculine singular. So to the one who is asking you uh, or borrowing, seeking to borrow, uh, and there's a real need there, I think is the context. Dose, give. By the way, the root here is diddle me, to give. And here we have an aorist imperative, second person singular from diddle me, give. And the one who is willing, notice or desirous, here again, we have tan, thelanta, again, another participle, accusative singular from thelo. You think of your participial form. Uh, you have on, antas, anti, anta, if you were using the verb emi to think of the participle. So this is uh, thelanta, accusative. So and to the one who wills from you, here we have a pa, which takes the genitive in su, from you to borrow. Danisaste. Uh, uh, notice danisaste is your aorist uh, middle here, infinitive. In other words, the one who desires uh, to uh, borrow uh, aorist middle infinitive from danizo. Uh, to lend money uh, or to borrow money. And I'm assuming here he's looking at a real a need. Uh, do not me apostrephase. Do not uh, turn away uh, from helping. And notice here we have the aorist subjunctive, uh, second person singular from apostrepho. Uh, excuse me, apostrephomai, uh, to turn away. So aorist subjunctive, second person singular from apostrephomai, do not turn away. So this is uh, a great text in which Christ is teaching the principle of non-resistance. And he's making practical application of that. Now this term, uh, non-resistance has been used both in practical uh, down-to-earth everyday relationships with people and then also a non-resistance in a sense in the Anabaptist movement 
of never uh, hurting uh, another human being. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, one of the, and what I might do is just present here a little bit of Anabaptist theology, uh, which is, I'm going to say, uh, you don't hear a lot of it in, in many, uh, can I say, uh, in, in much teaching often. They were a small group of reformers that were part of the Reformation who believed in being rebaptized. <laughs> And many of them suffered heavily for it. Uh, sad to say, some even from the reformers. And there were many godly Anabaptists. Uh, some would be like Menno Simmons, who was uh, a priest, but who then became a believer following the Reformation. But felt he wanted to not only be baptized again as a testimony uh, of his faith after conversion, but also uh, applying biblical non-resistance to every area of life. Uh, and he and also several others like Felix Mans and Conrad Grebel were well-known uh, Anabaptists about the 1600s, 16th century that you don't hear a lot about unless you are in Mennonite uh, circles uh, or uh, churches that would be familiar with uh, these uh, great, can I say, Anabaptist uh, people. It is interesting that they sought to apply non-resistance to every area of life, including the idea of following Christ in a literal way as disciples of Christ, and following their conscience in that, they truly believed in the full authority of Scripture, and also uh, following what the apostles taught, and what they believe the early church taught up until uh, about the time of Constantine, when, when things changed. And so before that, it was their belief that Christ and the apostles taught uh, a non-resistance uh, in a total sense in every area of life. And so uh, it is interesting to read the Anabaptist. I would recommend a theology book that I have enjoyed a lot, Introduction to Theology by J.C. Winger, who uh, wrote a study of uh, really Anabaptist theology. And it's one of the best, I think, of Anabaptist uh, theological study. So I would recommend him. It's called Introduction to Theology uh, by J.C. Winger. And a number of people that he refers to, along with Menno Simmons, Felix Manx, and Conrad Grebel, uh, he refers to others. Uh, like John Cadot, who was not, uh, by the way, Mennonite, but as far as I, I understand, and also others like uh, Colbert, uh, and I quote from him on page uh, 325, he says, if anyone is interested in reading more about uh, the Anabaptists and their belief on not only non-resistance, but in, in different areas, but of, of their belief, uh, one can refer to the writings of Colbert G. Rutenberg, who is a Baptist, in, in my understanding, John Horsch, Edward Yoder, uh, Melvin Gingrich, and uh, Guy Franklin Hirschberger, and John H. Yoder. And he gives this quote on page three, 25. Uh, and I've enjoyed these works very much. Uh, I have also written a book, uh, a short treatise, uh, called Anabaptist or Non-Resistance from the Anabaptist Perspective that uh, has been published by Lagos, uh, Lagos, uh, what do you call it, software company. 
And also it's on out on Google uh, Books. It's free on Google Books. Uh, if anyone would have an interest called the Anabaptist or non-resistance from the Anabaptist perspective, uh, which is seeking to apply this in every area of life, uh, following the principle of non-resistance. And that would also be my own personal conviction. So I wanted to share a little bit about this uh, uh, Anabaptist background, but also do a grammatical analysis of this great text of biblical non-resistance. And basically, Jesus is the teacher that one wants to follow, the disciples as well, who said Jesus you know, left us an example, who being reviled did not revile back, but delivered himself over to the one who judges righteously, and uh, we're to follow in his example. That word example, by the way, is this, this is in 1 Peter 2, uh, the Greek word means to write the alphabet after the master. The alphabet was written, Aleph, uh, Beit, uh, or excuse me, I should go to Greek, Alpha, <laughs> Alpha, uh, Beta, Gimel, uh, rather than Hebrew, and then one would imitate the teacher. He would write it in wax, and one would imitate the teacher. I'll never forget in seminary when we did an exegesis of First Peter, and that made such an impression on me, that Greek word, and how we are to write the alphabet example after Jesus, who on the cross even prayed, uh, Father, forgive them. And when Peter used the sword, he said, put up the sword, Peter, and Father, forgive them. So uh, Jesus lived the example of non-resistance, uh, Anabaptists believe, and so do really all believers believe to a limited degree that Jesus lived that. And uh, same way with the apostles where Paul says, oh, no man, anything except to love one another. So this is a beautiful text on non-resistance. And I, I hope uh, we meditate on that and it should be applied to every area uh, I believe the text is teaching of life. And having been a pastor for many years, uh, I can tell you one of the most difficult places is in church board meetings. Uh, I've often said, and we've loved all of our churches, but I've often said, you know, I, I hope in heaven we don't have board meetings. And uh, it was hard sometimes to be non-resistant. And so it has application, I believe, to every area of life. What a beautiful text, and I hope the Greek uh, can be helpful as we meditate on it, as we continue working through this great uh, Sermon on the Mount.